turned down super glossy I think I have like three coats of gloss black on this guys pretty cool yeah that turned out really good hoping the bottom turns out really good too but uh, honestly uh, the bottom is not as important as the top good stuff it's one of those tricky weekends Sun's hiding up in there somewhere, but we got some sprinkling going on. You know, that normal spring weather. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Class VW, and we are back in the garage, back on the 1956 over in the rag top EFI triple build. We're working on that fuel system again. Yeah, again. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do, man. Let me turn it around real quick and we'll talk about it. So yeah, we've got uh, quite a bit of things done well off camera anyway and you gotta love good rainy weekends for knocking stuff out first thing you guys if you're on my social media all you already seen like you know facebook group or instagram i kind of been messing around with repainting the neck up here because i added this 6 a.m bung preventing the uh, fuel tank i gotta go ahead and do like a 400 grit sand of the whole tank here and I'm gonna go ahead and repaint the whole top section. You can see that I've been playing around with a vent. I don't think that I'm gonna keep this. I'm probably gonna end up coming over like to this and then down over here. I do like the idea of the, the coil, the little bit of a loop being in there. We're gonna go ahead and mount the fuel pump today. I got my new Bosch fuel pump in. I'm gonna show you guys that here in a second. We got the clearancing completed on the Berg five speed. Let's take you inside the car. I'll show you that hey goose what's going on baby i know oh i love that smell in here yeah i gotta finish painting my other battery box i took apart all of the haltech stuff and got it uh kind of prepped and ready you know for routing i gotta punch the hole in on this side so i can get the grommet through and then i'm gonna start working out the routing once we get the uh, transmission back from the transmission place yeah because we got the clearancing done the Berg 5-speed is fitting in here great. Let me grab a light real quick so I can show you guys that a little bit better. Inside the actual tunnel area, you can see that uh, the Dave Foltz nose kit that I picked up. And the keys came in, by the way. Yeah, the keys that go inside there. Uh, it fits perfectly inside the hole. Instead of having to cut that sucker up, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> i got to make up a cover still to cover up the... the the Foltz nose cone for the Berg 5 speed. Down here, yeah, I'm gonna need another light to show you that notched out area so you can see what had to be notched out. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, well, this is kind of the best close up I can do with the camera. What you're seeing there is the notched out area of the torsion tube. 
And the reason why you have to notch out a little bit more is because you got to put a cover on there. And what I'm going to try to come up with is a plug. And it won't serve any kind of like structural like uh, support that plug. All it's going to really do is keep crap from getting inside of there, which I don't think is going to get a lot of crap would be getting in that area anyway. But we want to make sure that we can keep as much out of there as we can. Oh, great. Make up a cover here. Once I get the cover done, then we can finish painting up this area right there. And once I get that painted, we can put it in the quick roof. I'm going to probably double up the layers in the quick roof in the back uh, luggage area here. And then we'll be good to go. Let me show you. Well, we got a few other things going on at the bench over here. So let me turn around and show you that before we uh, get to work underneath the car. Yeah, so here's that uh, Bosch 044 fuel pump. That's supposed to be able to move quite a bit of E85. And that was a problem with the CB Performance electronic fuel pump that I had that uh, for the horsepower numbers I'm looking for, the volume of E85 required, that pump wouldn't be able to handle it, man. So from what I hear, this uh, Bosch 044 is pretty badassery. So good stuff. I got to replace some seals on this. So I did pick up some seals that are specific. These uh, baton or baton, I don't know how you say that. These O-rings are made for E85 or alcohol gas combination type fuel. So I'm gonna go through and replace the O-rings. Like I got an O-ring here that I gotta replace and then on my other fuel filter as well. So here's the, the smaller 100 micron fuel filter. Or actually, is this the 10? This is the 10 micron. No, this is the 10 micron. 10 micron fuel filter. And you can take a look at these and see the difference between them and why I decided to swap out to this one. Get out of there. Yeah, there's a little bit of a difference between those two fuel filters. And what I need to do to mount this one is, is a lot easier versus this, this one right here. I got to pull off this fitting right here because I got to move it to the uh actually i think i already installed that hold on no i haven't i haven't done it yet the uh 100 micron fuel filter that comes you know with a gas tank the first fuel filter before the fuel pump right there i gotta pull off that that's a 10 a.m fitting right there and i gotta put that 6 a.m fitting on there and then we'll be uh good to go throwing that line up to the uh fuel pump Guys, it's been like a few probably weeks since I've been back down in the garage. It's been super hot, super busy with work, but we're about to get back into things and we're just dealing with the fuel system today. You're not really going to cover too much of the transmission stuff. Kind of try to keep that separate from what's going on with the fuel system. So I'm going to show you what's going on with the gas tank. I got it painted after, uh, you know, I did a few things. Like I told you, I was going to do like a 400 grit, kind of like a resand, but I did like a 250 grit resand on it. Hit it with a cut, probably three coats of gloss black. We're going to do the X2 clear coat today, and I'm gonna see if I can get my battery holds painted as well, along with the uh, fuel pump hold. Get those painted, maybe we can get that put together and show you, you know, kind of like what those things look like. Plus, I changed my mind on how I'm gonna run the fuel lines up underneath the chassis. Kind of got this idea for a bracket that I wanna go with. Maybe I'll show you guys what's going on with that. All right, let's flip this around, show you the fuel tank.
once it uh, hardens up, man, it's gonna be like super nice, hard protectant. This stuff is like magic. Love it. You see how it kind of mists on there? Pretty awesome. So it goes without saying that, of course, we're gonna have to wait for this stuff to dry up before I can go ahead and mount my fuel pump into the new fuel pump location. I'll show you guys everything that's going on with that. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the custom bracket that I was uh, kind of working on. Let's take it over to the bench, guys, and we'll go over that. All right, guys, we are over at the bench now. I'm about to show you the template I can go on here. I'm gonna probably make this thing out of just some uh, 22 gauge steel. This is just a piece of sheet steel that I picked up from a, either Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those big box stores. So uh, let's go over the general idea of this thing and kind of like what I was thinking show you what it is first so this is just a simple template that I came up with and if you're on my social media you've already seen this bad boy and it just uh, folds up like a so that's it and then it mounts up underneath the uh, the car let me take you over to the car and show you kind of where this is gonna be going yes yeah, so I was never a fan of how the hard lines transitioned up to this point here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this bracket well, I'm going to make it first, and then I'm going to install this bracket right here. Just like this. And the hard lines will come up to there, and there'll be the transition, like just some little short uh, soft lines that go up to the bulkhead fittings there. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but this is just the way that I want to do it. So that I can go ahead and finish off these hard lines, and they'll be, you know, stable. I didn't like how close they were to the body right here. And how they swung up and that's just me you know personal preference with anything like this when it's custom guys oh let's see the marker down here yeah it's not gonna work huh it's not very fine at all that might work this is just a, uh, a wax, wax marker thing here. Here's what you got, right? You could scribe it, I guess, but uh, this will work. Most of the time, you're just getting a rough idea of where you want things to be anyway. You have to come back through and redo some of this stuff a little bit this is, this is what you do when you're at home and you don't have all the fancy tools like a brake for bending metal you know what I mean you know what I mean man you know what I mean yeah that's the the basic fold cut this out and we'll go from there see if I can do this with my shears Let's go ahead and uh, straighten everything out a little bit. Yeah, with the template, there's a couple of folds here too. These kind of fold up underneath and allow me to either rivet this or bonded if I need to. I think that just having it sandwich against the bottom of the car will probably hold it in place, honestly. If you had a brake, you'd be able to set up a brake to go ahead and make these, especially with such a low gauge steel. It's really easy to bend, bend and uh, get your bends, but all I really use is just a couple pieces of uh, flat steel and it'll get the job done. And you just kind of like want to go along the line that you're setting up here and you can get crazy with it like I told you you can get crazy you know get crazy get the ruler out start doing the exact measurements and all that kind of stuff but uh, yeah I'm more than just in the trying not to waste my life doing this stuff so I want to make the bracket but I don't want to spend my life making the bracket got it <laughs> all right the back side lined up Get it down in the vise. Check it out, see how she looks. 
Looks like it's off a little bit. That looks pretty close. Pretty close. And we'll just pop it a couple times. The sledge. Start that line. Let's move it down a little bit. Let me get this other end going. It's not like uh, you're spending a crap load of money here on this. It's all custom fab. Custom fab, man. A good way to start getting your feet wet in this kind of stuff. Some black crap on there. Where'd that come from? Weird. Break it loose. Let's see what we got. Hey, we got a bend. That's about right. That's about right. You can shape it up some. Bring it in. Just so like a loose. Take a smaller hammer. Kind of sharpen up these edges a little bit. There we go. Use what you got, man. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna have a bend right here too, right? These bends. Let's see what we can do about getting those knocked out. Cause that's gonna fold right up underneath. This is gonna fold right up underneath there. So let's go ahead and kind of finish cut this to that edge that we have now. Cause we have a little bit farther of an edge. There we go. There we go, just like that. All right, well, I got a bolt from down below, one of the ones that are gonna be fit in this area, and that is fine. So one of the things you wanna test fit is kinda of like how is everything going to made up. So we'll go ahead and run in, because it, it fits on cardboard, but you know, once you put this thing together, you don't want it to be a problem. So go ahead and stick in the bulkhead fitting. And we're gonna do, whoa. <laughs> Let's put it on loose on the front side here a little bit. Pull it back, drop down in the head of the bolt, and then run it through to kind of see what we got for clearances. Because the last thing you want is get this thing all painted up and together and then have it not fit right. So that's what we're looking at. Something around there. What we're concerned about is will a straight fitting go on there? Do we have enough clearance for that? And because I don't want to have to like shave the top of this dang thing because that would just be some crap of coley. So let's get a straight fitting and see if it fits on there. It looks good man. Like just about where it needs to be. Cool. Once it's all tightened up all the way. Yeah we got we got clearance. Sweet. Very cool. Let's go ahead and continue on. Time to fold it over. Cool beans. I'm going to straighten it out a little bit, but hey guys, it looks like something. Woo, guys, it is hot. It is hot down here, and I want to go ahead and show you what I got underneath for the bracket. Kind of give you an idea what it looks like mocked up before I kind of painted it and everything. And I make my small little uh, jumper line. So let's turn it around and show you what's going on out underneath there. Here you go. It looks a lot different. I like it a lot more than what I had going on here. The transition is way better. Getting my other uh, holds up into place underneath here is going to be way easier. And then I just got a transition. A couple little small jumper lines up to there. And then this portion will be good to go. I gotta take it all apart though, of course, and I gotta paint the uh, bracket. But yeah, I got the lines all trimmed up so you can see the debris field on the ground right here. Oh yeah. So other than that, I think that's probably gonna pretty much do it for today. I was gonna show you the uh, the fuel pump kind of mounted to the bracket, get it up inside the car, but 
the tank is still drying and uh, well everything else is looking really good let me kind of show you how the clear coat turned out it is super duper shiny I mean like it looks like freaking glass I love it oh my gosh yeah I told you man that clear coat is no joke it's all dried up looking good looking pretty and even these brackets for the LS coils they're just glossy greatness now let me show you the tank See if you guys kind of make it out inside the uh, inside the goose here. Yeah, man, she is. It looks good, guys. It looks really good. It turned out really well. The underside, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm not too worried about it. Just I put a couple coats of paint on there just to keep it from getting corroded. So yeah, that's what I'm doing for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Lots going on. Lots still to do. I gotta finish getting the transmission mocked up. So I can get the uh, transmission out and get the new keys installed so we can get everything kind of going here. And I've got a list of about a billion other things to do. But I hope you guys have a great weekend. It is Father's Day weekend right now as I'm talking to you guys. So have fun with your families. I'm about to head back upstairs, finish this video, hang out with my kids, and, you know, just have some good family time. This is Jason with Data Class BW, guys, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. That's right. If you hung out towards the end, <laughs> you get to see some of the stuff, man. Ooh, oh boy. There it is, guys. Fuel pump. All mounted up. All glossy painted fuel pump mounting bracket. I really do like how it turned out, man. Looks sweet. Very sweet. Fuel tank. Looking good. Gotta get this vent taken care of over here. Oh yeah. See you guys next time.